Hey guys, so today's video is going to be on heating devices. Uh, I'm going to run through just some of the more common heating devices um, and why they're suitable, if they are suitable, and in, if they are what they are suitable for. Uh, some of them are suitable for most reptiles, uh, some of them are suitable for only a few and only in a few different situations, and some are just downright bad for reptiles. So I'm going to run through most of the more common heaters um, in today's video. So the first heating element or device that I want to run through is the undertank heater or UTH. Um, so there are a lot of different brands of UTHs you can buy. They're for a lot of different purposes. You can use them for plants to you know help heat seedlings as they're sprouting because some plants do need that. And um, sorry about that. Um, and there are also different uses. You can you can use them for. Um, I believe some people will use them for things like um, uh, I don't know heating baby hatchling birds. Um, I did know somebody who did that once. So it can be used for several different things. But for reptiles, um, it's really mostly the same thing. It's there are also some used for people that are not the same thing. But um, the ones used for reptiles and plants are both the same thing. It's th this. Um, this is an eye power heating pad uh, for reptiles uh, specifically, but like I said, it's the same thing as for, for plants, so you could use this for seedlings. Uh, basically, uh, one side is just plastic with a cord that will plug into your wall, and the other side is sticky. So um, basically what you do is you peel off the non-stick paper on the one side, stick it to the underside or the side of your uh, tank or enclosure, and then plug this part. You can either plug this part directly into the wall, or what I recommend and what most people recommend as a safety measure and to keep the basking spot at the correct temperature, is uh, plugging it into a uh, thermostat. And what a thermostat will do is turn this on or off as it needs to to keep the desired temperature at the probe. So therefore it will um, make sure your gecko or reptile is not getting too hot and it's not getting too cold. It'll keep it just right. Uh, you can get an inexpensive thermostat for about twenty dollars and um, I have them on all of my reptile tanks because they are, I just think that they're a very very helpful and um, in a lot of situations a downright necessary component of most reptiles enclosures. But so basically what these do is if coming from below will generate heat from below which will then heat the gecko or the reptile's belly. Which in the case of leopard geckos and several other terrestrial geckos this is really helpful because they are belly baskers which basically means instead of basking in the sun like diurnal lizards will do they just sit on wherever they're sleeping and absorb heat through their belly which helps them digest food uh, better than if it was from a, a light bulb from above or the sun or something like that. Um, and in the wild that works because um, the the terrain that they live on in the wild is usually a rocky, sandy, soily kind of grassland. Um, and the way that this works, um, similar to that, is in that kind of an area the sun will be beating down on the terrain all day and during that time the gecko will be in a cooler microhabitat. So they'll be getting some heat from above um, but most of it's just going to be the air temperature. And then at night they'll come out and it'll be cooler, the air temperature will be cooler, but the rocks will still be nice and hot. So they'll be able to sit on the rocks and absorb the heat that the rocks are slowly letting off. So this is similar to that except for it, we use it during the day, which it doesn't really matter what time you're using it as long as your gecko gets the proper photo period with the heating. So uh, you could also hit, uh, hit it, put it on the side of the enclosure, which works for species that like to dig down to escape heat, so I'm thinking uh, scorpions and tarantulas, um, because if they dig down to escape heat when they're too hot and then they get closer to the heat, they won't realize that until they're dead. So you need to be really careful of that, and with those species what you should do is put it on the side of the enclosure so when they dig down they'll actually be escaping the heat more. Um, so these are really good um, heating device for a lot of different reptiles, but some reptiles like, um, I'm thinking here, iguanas, um, uh, most siloporous lizards, um, basically most lizards that have an eye on top of their head, and I don't mean like the regular eyes that they see with, but uh, a lot of lizards have an eye on top of their head that can only sense light. 
So um, those lizards generally recognize light as heat because they're used to light coming from above and heat coming from above. So if there's light, then there's heat. If there's heat, then there's light. But if they're having an undertank heater underneath their tank and there's no light or whatever, there's the light isn't um, proportional to the amount of heat that they have, um, they may think that they're too cold while they're actually burning their bellies. So that's something you really need to be careful of with diurnal lizards and iguanas are very prone to this and so are a lot of salopris lizards because the same thing happens with them. So that's something to be mindful of when you're using heat pads. Um, but that's generally a not, not too bad of a concern because um, for those species you generally want to have, they're diurnal, so you generally want to have UVB lighting. I mean it depends on the species, but as far as I'm aware all diurnal, diurnal species of reptiles require UVB lighting. So if, you're, if they require UVB lighting, the more inexpensive and um, longer lasting method to provide that is to provide UVB lighting and heat all in one bulb, the mercury vapor bulb. So uh, although some people may use an undertank heater on a diurnal reptiles tank, most people won't because it actually costs more to do it that way than it would to simply use a mercury vapor bulb on a rheostat or something like that that will control the amount of heat it's putting out so you can adjust that as you need to without the use of a thermostat. So after that there's other another uh, heating device is flex watt heat tape which I don't have with me today but basically what it is is it's a thinner plastic version of this um, without the adhesive it's you have to wire it in yourself you have to get a cord for it yourself unless you you know buy a cord set for it but basically, that is sort of like this, but it also can get really, really hot and cause burns on its own. Um, modern heating pads generally can't produce burns very easily, but heat tape still can. So you need to be really careful about that because there is no built-in heating uh, control element in, a, uh, in heat tape, and it will get hot enough to start fires or um, at the very least burn your reptile. Um, so you want to be really careful of that and always put heat tape on a thermostat. Um, heat tape is more for a professional because it's basically the same price as a heating pad if you're getting just about the same amount as you would need for a single heating pad. But if you're using it for a rack system, like uh, if you're an advanced breeder and you have a rack system for your leopard geckos or ball pythons or another kind of animal, uh, you can just put one long sheet of flex watt on the shelf and then control that by a thermostat and you can uh, you can heat all of your reptiles enclosures with the single uh, piece of flex watt, at least all of them on that shelf. So that's really really helpful for an advanced breeder but for most people um, who just generally just want to um, just heat their family pets enclosure or a couple hobby geckos that they have and don't have like a full on rack system this is the better option for you guys. Um, but both of them are very, very similar, just uh, with flex watt. You have more options, but it is more dangerous, so you need to consider that. Uh, if you do go with flex watt, definitely look up videos on how to wire it safely before you use it, because flex watt can be very, very dangerous, like I already said. Um, you are dealing with 120 volts AC, which is not something to be taken lightly. Um, they can easily shock you or potentially start a fire if you are not careful. So that's definitely something you need to be mindful of. Uh, another heating device you can use is an incandescent bulb. Um, this is kind of uh, moving on from the below heat because there's not really any more below heat to talk about. But um, I don't have an incandescent bulb with me that's a daytime bulb. But I do have nighttime bulbs which I believe are in my drawer here and they are not. So I will need to find those. Um, basically what the incandescent bulb is, it's just a regular light bulb. This is an LED bulb, so it gives off very, very little heat, but it gives off light, and that's all I'm using it for is light, because I'm heating Lynetta's cage here with an undertank heater. But um, an incandescent bulb comes in several different wattages, which is the amount of power it consumes, um, but the higher wattages generally mean the higher amount of heat. Uh, you can lower, if you get a higher wattage bulb, like a 100 watt bulb, but you only have a gecko or a leopard gecko maybe that needs a 90 degree enclosure and you have a 10 gallon tank that's like, you know, this tall, um, you could just put it on a rheostat or 
with these Cougars 5.5 inch tank lamps, not this one, not any of them that, that I have here actually. The ones that I have on Rex's tank, which is over there, um, they actually come with built-in rheostats, which are really, really handy because you don't need to spend an extra $15 to get a rheostat that you can then plug the fixture into and um, just dim the uh, amount of power that's being given to the light bulb and therefore the amount of heat and light that's being given off. But um, a lot of people will use these and they work fine for most reptiles that are diurnal. Um, nocturnal reptiles though, like um, crested geckos or leopard geckos, they won't really take advantage of the heat during the day. They like to come out at night. And although an incandescent bulb will work for that, if you put a piece of like slate or something underneath the basking light so that they will be able to come out at night and bask, um, absorb that heat for coming from below, um, it doesn't really work as well as an under tank heater would, and for that reason I recommend an under tank heater. It costs basically the same amount of money when you add everything up, and um, you don't have to continually replace it like you do with um, incandescent bulbs. They're, they're good for you know a couple months, and then they burn out and you have to replace them, and that's just an ongoing cost that you could completely avoid with an under tank heater, as well as have um, just have it be a better setup for your pet. So, although a lot of reptiles can successfully use incandescent bulbs in their enclosures, I don't recommend it with nocturnal reptiles for the most part. Of course, there are exceptions to this, and you need to find the exact uh, requirements and recommendations for your species before you decide on a uh, heating device. But um, in at least leopard geckos enclosures, I recommend uh, an under tank heater rather than an, an incandescent bulb, simply because incandescent bulbs don't heat as efficiently as under tank heaters will, and your gecko will end up having a slower metabolism rate and could potentially not get enough heat to thrive if it does not have uh, an under tank heater or another source of heat that really heats it really, really well all day long. And that brings me to the DHPs, deep heat projectors, which I don't have with me today, but uh, what basically what they do is they, um, I don't know all the like ins and outs of it and everything, but basically it provides um, the full infrared spectrum to a to the reptile, and then it heats them. Basically, it just gets into their tissues and just heats the very core of the reptile. That's a really really great um, heater for uh, reptiles. A lot of reptiles, some reptiles, um, I believe, will not work well with this. Don't quote me on this. I've I'm not sure about this, you definitely want to find the research um, on your specific reptile, but um, at least with, um, at least I would think, um, DP projectors wouldn't work as well for, um, I don't even know what it wouldn't work for, um, I've never used them, so I have really no idea, I don't want to be recommending them for every kind of reptile period since I've never used them and I have no idea exactly what reptiles they work for, but I do know that they are recommended by a lot of people for a lot of different reptiles. So of course do your research first and don't go based on what I'm saying ever because um, you should never go based on one person's opinion, but um, I would venture to guess that they are not just a universal, they work for every different kind of reptile. But, like I said, do your research on your individual species before you um, make a decision. So, uh, according to a lot of people, they are a really good um, heating device for a lot of different reptiles. And um, I have not used them, but they if they're anywhere near as good as people are saying that they are, I will definitely be using them sometime in the future. So, that is basically the main... Um, I've, I've run through the main... Um, heat coming from below as well as some of the heat coming from above. Uh, I'm just going to think real quick if there's anything else. Um, oh, so ceramic heat emitters, which I'm not sure if I have any of them with me today either. Um, I do on Rex's tank. He has some nighttime heat going, which is just a ceramic heat emitter on a rheostat. But um, I'm not going to get it down just for showing you what they look like. You can just do a Google search what a ceramic heat emitter looks like and you'll figure it out really quickly. Basically, it's a ceramic it's a light bulb, but no light, and it gives off heat. It has a, it's a ceramic uh, bulb 
kind of thing with a heating element inside of it. And it can get really hot up to 750 degrees. And unlike a lot of incandescent bulbs, which direct the heat towards the basking spot, the, uh, um, the ceramic heat emitters, they just radiate the heat. So they have to be really hot in order to get the heat, the correct amount of heat down to the basking spot. So a lot of people have had houses burned down and um, entire collections be killed because of ceramic heat emitters. So you need to be really, really careful with them if you're going to use them. Uh, I put mine on a rheostat because I always want mine to uh, give just about, you know, 80 degrees heat on the warm side of my gecko's tank at night. That'll just give him a little bit of heat so he can come out and bask if he wants to and whatever. Um, I don't recommend them as the sole heater, uh, heater for a uh, leopard gecko's tank at least because um, for the same reason that they, that the incandescent bulb I don't recommend. Um, it just doesn't heat as efficiently as an under tank heater or a DHP which gets into the gecko would um, heat. So uh, although it's good for a lot of different reptiles, um, for leopard geckos, daytime heat, like they're just primary heat source, I don't recommend that. At night it doesn't really matter as much for them because they're going to be outside in their tank basking, so if there's some heat coming from above they're going to be basking at it anyway. And even if it doesn't heat them very efficiently, it does um, heat them a little bit, and it's not necessary for them to have heat at night in most uh, cases anyway, so um, it is not a necessary component of a nighttime setup for a gecko, but I like to do it. And then for a lot of different diurnal reptiles, I would believe it would be good for them. Um, although, like I said earlier, a mercury vapor bulb, you can get heat and UVB all in one bulb, and that's a better choice than these. Which brings me to the Mercury Vapor Balls, which I also do not have today. But they are basically similar to an incandescent bulb in that they give off light and heat. But they also give off UVB. So UVB is, of course, necessary for life for a lot of different reptile species. Um, but um, it's not necessary for all nocturnal species. So, in my leopard gecko's enclosure, I don't have a mercury vapor bulb because, um, same thing with an incandescent bulb. The heat wouldn't be as efficient as it would be for an under tank heater, and UVB lighting isn't necessary for a leopard gecko, according to a lot of people. There's a lot of debate over that, but um, I have never given my leopard geckos uh, UVB, and they have been completely fine. Um, I just always supplement their food with calcium with vitamin D3, and that's good enough for them from what I've seen. But back on track, um, so mercury vapor bulbs work well for a lot of different diurnal reptiles because they give light, heat, and UVB all in one bulb, like I said. So um, they're a really good heater for a lot of different reptiles. I'm thinking here bearded dragons, iguanas, um, those kind of reptiles. Um, the only thing I don't like about them is they're just a regular small bulb, and you want to be able to cover most of the reptile with whatever basking spot. And that's just my personal opinion. You, a lot of people um, say that that's not necessary, but you always want, in my opinion, you always want to have um, the reptile be able to easily stretch out fully and have it still be in its, you know, thermal gradient. Um, but Mercury vapor bulbs are generally a really good option for a lot of different diurnal reptile species. Uh, and now I'm going to get into the one, um, the two um, bad, or the two, one of them's bad and just bad for reptiles, period, and one of them is, can be used but with a lot of caution. So I'm going to get into the one that can be used with a lot of caution first. And I actually do have that today. I was given this. Uh, when I got Leia, because Leia was being heated with three of these and an under tank heater, which, with just one of these, her basking spot was getting up to 117 degrees Fahrenheit before I shut off the enclosure, uh, the, the heat in the enclosure. So, of course, these get really, really hot because leopard geckos, you want them to be at like 90 degrees. Anything over that, anything over like 95 for a long period of time could stress or kill them. So, uh, yeah, you don't want that. And this, um, I just have, I got, I have three of them. I sold one and um, all the bulbs for them, and I have two left that I'm just not using. You can use them if you put them on a rheostat, but you have to be really, really careful because um, they are really, really dangerous. They can easily start fires, and they can easily burn the gecko or other reptile. 
Really the only reptiles that these mini halogen fixtures and bulbs would be good for is a small reptile that needs a relatively warm basking spot that you can put a, this thing on a rheostat for. Because, of course, 117 degrees Fahrenheit is not good for really any small uh, reptile. Um, and of course, it's so small, the basking spot is so small on this thing that you wouldn't be able to properly heat a bearded dragon's enclosure or a monitor's enclosure um, with something like this. So you'd need to put this thing on a rheostat and put it over like a leopard gecko's tank or something like that if you were going to have it work. I just don't use them at all because of the same reason I don't use incandescent bulbs on, rep on leopard gecko's tanks. I don't think that they heat very efficiently, even when they do give just the right amount of heat. And then the last one, that is absolutely terrible for reptiles, period. You never use this for reptiles enclosure, ever, because it has killed so many reptiles and it will continue to do so for as long as people still buy them and use them. Um, and I'm talking right now about hot rocks. Um, hot rocks, in case you don't know, are basically like these red rocks. They can range from this big to this big. They sell them in pet stores all the time. I was just in Petco the other day. They still sell them. Um, those things are just the worst ever, ever reptile heating elements, and here's why. They don't just heat uniformly over the entire surface. They heat in hot spots. So basically, one part of it could be, you know, 90 degrees, which is great for a leopard gecko. And although um, leopard geckos aren't going to be out during the day to bask on it anyway, so that doesn't really work for them, um, maybe the correct basking spot for a bearded dragon or something like that that you could put on, to, on this hot rock. That sounds great, right? Except for the other side could be 117 degrees Fahrenheit and rising. And then that could change. It just constantly fluctuates, it constantly has hot spots, and it gets way too hot. And there's no way to control it. So you can absolutely never use hot rocks on any sort of reptile's enclosure. Safely, that is. If you want to kill your gecko in a really hu uh, inhumane, um, really terrible way, then definitely go for these. But, um, yeah, you never want to use hot rocks for any reptiles enclosure ever. They are just an absolutely terrible, terrible um, heating element for any reptiles enclosure. I was given one the one time, and I literally threw it out the window and threw it onto the concrete because I could not use that. Um, so, um, hot rocks, just never use them. That's just all I'm trying to say here. Um, if you want to see why you never use hot rocks, uh, you just look up hot rock burns reptiles uh, in Google and you'll see just a ton of pictures of reptiles that their just bellies and arms and legs were just completely mutilated because they were burned so badly by these hot rocks and other improper heating elements. Um, so then you will realize just how important it is to give the reptiles a correct heating source, not just correct temperatures. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, don't forget to share this video with your friends. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.